Welcome to Legends in Sports. I'm Mr. Nobody. Today we got an exciting show for you. We're going to do it on the number one neo mannerism artist in the whole world. He was a football player, Ernie Barnes. His last year in the NFL, the owner saw his artwork and he hired him to paint instead of play. Can you imagine that? He gave him a salary to paint instead of play. Yeah, I mean, I painted. I paint all kinds of stuff. Nobody's ever given me a salary to paint. I paint rooms, I paint houses, I paint all kinds of stuff. But I've never made that kind of money, you know what I mean? And nobody ever wanted to have a show for me. Anyway, let's get on to the show. Ernie Barnes, yeah. Ernie Barnes was a professional football player for five years who became an actor, an author, and the number one neo-mannerism artist in the world. Ernie, go ahead and tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, I was born in Durham, North Carolina, and uh, my uh, athletic career, of course, matured in uh, grade school through uh, high school, but uh, it was not uh, the first uh, uh, desire I had to, that I wanted to pursue. Uh, my first interest was in art. And uh, I was fortunately able to develop that with the help of teachers and the encouragement of uh, uh, my parents and friends because that was something I did very well early. And uh, football was something that entered my life through my peers. Because I was big, I had to play football. It was, it was, not, it was not something that I was really thrilled about when I first went out. Matter of fact, I quit the first time I was out because I, I didn't like the, the uh, contact. And it wasn't until I uh, uh, built myself up through weight, with weights that I went back out and made the uh, uh, team in high school. My senior year, I was uh, captain of the team and I had uh, about 26 athletic scholarships and chose to go to North Carolina Central University where I majored in art and uh, uh, on a football scholarship. And I was drafted into Pro Bowl in 1960. I was the 10th draft choice of the then world champion Baltimore Colts. And uh, I had a career that spanned it for uh, over five year period, which was enough to get my retirement. And then I quit and I uh, went back to my first love, which was art. What was the secret to your success? Well, the secret to anyone's success is uh, perseverance, dedication, uh, uh, making sure that uh, you keep your dream in focus, if you have a dream, and never losing sight of that dream. Uh, my dream was always to become an artist, and that's what I have been doing now 34 years since my retirement from professional football. What advice would you give to a young man just starting out? Well, for anyone who's just starting out in, in sports, uh, one thing, make sure that that's what you want to do. Sometimes that comes along with, with uh, the minor successes that you have and you discover that you're capable of uh, uh, performing physically on the field and uh, you mature uh, with that uh, impetus. But, uh, for, you, you, you have to be dedicated uh, and you have to persevere, you, you have to, uh, uh, that thing they call practice every day is where those uh, things like perseverance and dedication should be applied and uh, either you become good enough to make it professionally or you won't. I don't think uh, anyone should maybe have that goal of trying to make it into the NFL or the N NBA. The goal is to become as good as you can become. If that should happen, fine. If it doesn't, then have something else to fall back on. 
When did you first know you were going to play pro ball? Well, I didn't know I was going to play pro ball until I was drafted. And when I was drafted, I, I, I really didn't know. I uh, went into training camp with the desire, uh, with the uh, attitude that I was going to uh, give it my best and uh, let the chips fall where they may uh, because uh, all the time in, in a game like professional football, as competitive as, as it is, it's not always the best man who wins. Uh, when you get into the business area of the game, sometimes it's the man who has the best attorney that wins and gets you the best contract, the best deal. So uh, the game of uh, professional football is a business. Uh, the hoopla that you experience in college and high school uh, disappears to a great degree because you are a body that has to perform every Sunday and in, and in practice uh, to maximum capacity. Uh, nothing else less is accepted. So once you make it to that, um, have that placement in sports though, there are things that come about that uh, among w within the context of the game that makes you figure out pretty quickly what it is you have to do to stick around. Do you play for the love of the game or the money? You always play for the love. Uh, when you start playing for the money, you have a problem. Um, the most difficult thing when I retired was getting away from the game and it was the camaraderie that you miss. You miss the guys uh, and you miss the experience maybe of uh, uh, the thoughts of running or the, con the, the contact. So you have to, p you peel your way, because you play for love, you peel your way from, from, uh, your way from the game very slowly, very slowly and hopefully you have something to uh, another area, uh, another profession to enter into to absorb your, your, your mind, to, to, to uh, uh, take place of what was uh, before a tremendous affection you had. Um, how important is an education? <laughs> education is extremely important. Uh, it's getting to the point now where you can't play the game hardly without a an education, but uh, edu the education is it, period. Uh, you have to learn how to function in the world independent of a game. And uh, the thing that's going to get you there and allow you to get the best out of life is an education. Have you ever been hurt? Oh, of course. I was hurt during the time that I was played many times. Uh, and many times you have to play while you're injured. Uh, they fortunately were not uh, injuries so severe that I had to leave the game, uh, but you're always hurt when you're playing the game. There's never a time, Harley, that you <laughs> aren't hurt. What kind of off-season uh, workouts did you do? Well, off-season, I kept myself in shape with weights. During that time, weight training was not uh, as pronounced as it is today. Uh, I was fortunate to uh, have developed an interest in uh, weight training in high school and pursued it in college. So it was part of just who I was. Uh, and because I wanted to uh, be my best and uh, get the best out of my body, it was something I figured I had to do. So it was uh, something I, uh, during the off season, uh, spent, had a routine that was uh, practically every other day. Uh, you work, the routine I adopted during the time that I was playing was to, to, you would work uh, certain areas of the body on one day and another area of the body on, a, on the next day. Uh, the uh, upper portion of your body, your pectorials, your arms, uh, triceps, biceps, uh, the latissimus dorsi, the muscles in the back and the lower back you have to exercise and your stomach muscles and the next day it's the lower extremities. And always of course some running is necessary to keep yourself toned. Did you have any special diet? 
Uh, no, uh, during that time I, I didn't. <laughs> Maybe I should have, but uh, I ate everything I uh, wanted. It was not the right thing to do, but that's what I. That was what I did. Take any special vitamins or anything? Always vitamins. I always took uh, vitamins, and always if 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 nothing, usually a, a, a multivitamin did it for me. But I had to have something. I, I wouldn't uh, experience experiment with too many uh, other drugs. What was the high point of your career? My retirement. My retirement was the high point of my career because it was the time when I could, I was I felt free of the game. And I could, for the first time, look forward to doing something that I had always wanted to do uh, prior to developing an interest in football. Um, there's more to life than football. And you should realize that very, very early, even before you start to play the game, because you can get an injury and never go beyond uh, high school or college. Uh, it's, I, the most important thing in the life is develop your mind and how to use that mind uh, in other areas uh, where you can make a living. What was the most difficult moment in your career and how did you overcome it? Well, the most difficult moment in my career. Uh, that's difficult to say. I can't find any one moment because as a professional athlete you have many times that are down times. Sometimes you you think you played a great game and then you go and watch the films and you played a horrible game and that can be a down time. And injury can be a down time. If you get cut, that's certainly a down time. Uh, but there are highs and lows within the framework of the, of the game, so um, it's, it's not all the thrills and the way it looks uh, on television, the behind the scenes uh, of professional sports is pretty rough. Do you have any superstitions? Oh, I developed superstitions when I was playing. I guess a lot of the guys do. It's the way you tie your shoes, uh, you have to wear something a certain way. Uh, I, my, I didn't have a, a, a lot of superstitions. My thing was basically, basically to just protection uh, <laughs> for my arms and my hands because uh, not thinking of art, I, have, uh, I just don't have the hands of a big guy. You know, I have sl slender hands and they had to be protected with padding. So I was always concerned about my forearms and my hands because I got contusions all the time. When it's all said and done, how would you like to be remembered? Well, that's nothing that I give a lot of thought to. Uh, um, I would think that my art career would surpass anything I did athletically. I would hope so. And that's what I'm giving all of my time and attention to. After all, I've had 34 years as an artist now, and I only had uh, five years in professional sports. So, and actually, I, I thought by this time uh, nobody would re even remember that I played, but it's even becoming more prominent now than when I did.